Protests, riots, vandalism, looting, arson, and violence in light of the fatal Michael Brown shooting put one of Missouri's cities in the spotlight last year. The ongoing unrest made national news headlines, and after all the media coverage, it casted a negative impression of Missouri. When people hear Missouri, they often think Ferguson. About 120 miles away is the capital city of the state, where historically black college is finding solutions of their own to combat the negative stigma and evoke positive change, starting with young people. As I look at it, their next generation lives in poverty, and that cycle continues, and so education can break that cycle throughout the world, throughout the country, throughout Jefferson City, throughout Missouri, definitely in Ferguson. Dr. Kevin Rome, president of Lincoln University in Jefferson City, knows this struggle all too well. Well, it's, 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 my life, it's been a blessing, you know. I grew up as this little boy in a single parent household. Fortunately, I had a loving mother and, and siblings, but we had very little resources. We lived in public housing. Uh, we received public assistance. And so I could have never imagined that I would be a college president. From poverty to college president, Dr. Rome beat the odds. He credits his success to not only his mother, grandmother, other family members, but also his childhood days at the Boys Club in Columbus, Georgia. It was very important because we were in the lower socioeconomic levels, and so we didn't have money to go away to camps and participate in a lot of programs. And so because the Boys and Girls Club was free, or relatively free, it provided an outlet for those kids who didn't have a lot of options. And so for us, it was everything. And it continues to be everything to some families in Jefferson City, where Dr. Rome is working with Stephanie Johnson, director of the Jefferson City Boys and Girls Club, to do what only a couple colleges have done nationwide. He had heard that we were losing our facility and we, we were looking to, to rebuild. And I'm like, yeah, we don't know where we're going to go. And, and, I, and we're sitting in his office and, and we're just talking out loud. And he's like, wait a minute. What if you built on the campus? Okay. Without knowing the rules or regulations, Dr. Rome says he knew moving the Boys and Girls Club to his campus would be the right thing to do. It's exposure. Um, and it's building their lives in a way and in a manner that will hopefully push them towards uh, higher education. I want them to see themselves as faculty, as students, as doctors, as lawyers, as whatever they can imagine and through education they can accomplish it. And so regardless of what they see day to day, and I don't know what they see day to day, when they come here they can see a vibrant college campus and hopefully they see themselves as part of this. Johnson says within 30 days Dr. Rome had it passed by his board of curators that they were going to donate land to the Boys and Girls Club. It was unbelievable. Ever since that moment, he has been our champion. It's not me. It's, it's absolutely not me. I just made the suggestion, but it's really the work of Stephanie and her committees and all those people who have made this happen. You know, I, I'm just doing what the university should be doing, and that's working with the community to help make things better. So uh, I, I don't see it as anything extraordinary or special, it's just what we're supposed to do. Making a difference, changing lives, one child at a time, to ensure Ferguson never happens again. An inspirational plan lighting the way home for children in Jefferson City. A movement starting here that may change the state and ultimately the nation. Reporting in Jefferson City, Stephanie Harada, KRCG 13.